Hey, what is up everyone? My name's Alex and in this screencast, we're going to learn how to define validation rules for SQLized models. Before we delve into the topic of validation, I want to take a moment to tweak the code we wrote in the previous screencast to include an exception handler. Now, if an error occurs within this callback function, that error will be passed to the catch handler where we can handle it with grace. For the purposes of this tutorial, we'll simply write any errors we encounter to the console, like so. I'll also take this opportunity to make some readability tweaks and to run a JavaScript beautifier. All right, with that out of the way, let's talk about validation, shall we? As you may or may not have noticed, we are already asking SQLize to validate data before inserting it into the database. Take this property called title as an example. When inserting an article, SQLize validates that the title is one, a string, two, unique, and three, not equal to null. Look, if I attempt to insert an article that has no title, or in other words, a title that is equal to null, SQLize throws an error. That error reads, title cannot be null. To give another example, if I specify a title that is not a string, in this case, it's an array of integers, SQLize throws another error. This time the error reads, title cannot be an array or an object. This is good. Without us even having to think about it, SQLize protects the basic integrity of the data. But what if we want to specify more precise validation rules? Well, to specify more precise validation rules, we can utilize what are described in the documentation as model validations. As you can see, there is an abundance of validation rules at your disposal. You can take any of these validation rules and associate one or more to any of the model properties. To associate validation rules with a model property, all you have to do is define an attribute called validate and on that attribute specify one or more validation rules. In the case of the article model, I think it makes sense to say that the title must be between 10 and 150 characters in length. This will ensure that the title is long enough to communicate the crux of the article, but not so long as to become uninteresting to the reader. Looking again at the list of possible validation rules, it looks like the rule called len is what we need. It is described to only allow values with a length between x and y. Now that I know which rule I want, I'll go back to my editor and apply it to the title property. There really isn't too much to say about this code. This here is the minimum length of the string and this is the maximum length of the string. Simple, right? Now that I've applied the len rule to the title property, if I try to insert an article whose title is shorter than 10 characters, an error will be thrown. The error reads, validation len failed. An error would also be thrown if the title was longer than 150 characters. I'm not going to show that today though. Something that strikes me is that the error message is not very user-friendly. When it comes to validation, in my experience, most of the time you want to take the error and present it to the user. As such, you want the message to be user-friendly. However, at the moment, this error is not user-friendly at all. Fortunately, SQLize allows you to specify a custom error message. To specify a custom error message for the len property, you'll want to refactor the code as follows. First of all, take the argument, this array here is the argument, and cut it. In its place, define an object. On that object, define a property called args, and for its value, paste the argument you copied just a few seconds ago. Additionally, you can specify a property called message whose value is the custom error message. Check this out. When I run the code again, because remember, the title is still too short, we now have a much more user-friendly error. Before moving on to what will be our final topic, I want to repeat a caveat described in the documentation which is that if the allow null property is equal to true, which it is by default, 
and you supply a null value for that property, any validation rules defined for that property will not be applied. Here, let me make that description a bit clearer with an example. If I return to my editor and set the title's allow null property to true, or just remove it entirely for that matter, because remember, the default value is true, and then attempt to insert an article with a null title, you might expect the validation to fail. After all, the value null is not a string, nor does it fall in the range defined by the len rule. You might be surprised to see that if I run this program, SQLize does not throw an error. Simply put, if a property is set to allow null and the value for that property has been set to null, no validators are run. This is perfectly fine default behavior. You just need to be aware of it is all. All right, one last thing I'll show you is how to define a custom validator. Because even though SQLize offers a whole bunch of common validation rules, it's not at all inconceivable that you'll have a requirement for which no predefined rule exists. It's because of this that SQLize allows you to define custom validation rules. Maybe this is a silly example, but imagine you want to ensure that the body of the article starts with an uppercase letter. There are a couple of ways we could go about satisfying this requirement. One way would be to use a regular expression. As you can see, SQLize provides a handful of validators that enable you to specify a regular expression. Another way would be to define a custom validation function, which is the option I'm going to opt for here. Before we can define a custom validation rule for the body property, we must first create the validate property, like we did before. Now that that's done, we can begin defining our custom validator. Defining a custom validator is pretty straightforward. All you have to do is define a property whose identifier is the name of your validator. In this case, I'm going to call my validator starts with upper and whose value is a function that takes the value to validate. Specifically, what you're going to get is the body value. So I'll call this body val. Essentially, when SQLize is doing validation, it will pass the article's body value to your function it is then up to you to validate the body value and to throw an error if the body is deemed invalid. In this case, I'll check to see if the first character is an uppercase character. If it's not, I'm going to throw a new error and supply to that error constructor function a custom error message. If the first letter is an uppercase character, we're not going to do anything. And yes, this empty else statement doesn't really do anything, but I include it because it's instructive. In summary, if the given value is invalid, you should throw an error and specify for that error a custom error message. However, if the value is valid, you simply don't do anything. As far as SQLize is concerned, if your function does not throw an error, then the value must be valid. All right, let's test this out. What I'm going to do is I'm going to give this a proper title. So it's going to have to be at least 10 characters long. I'll just make it gibberish. And the body I'll keep as wobble. Notice how it starts with a lowercase w. In theory, when I run this program, it should give us an error. Okay, yes, it does give us an error. However, this is not the error I was expecting. As you can see, we've got an error relating to the validation. Let me just go up and fix that real quick. Now let's try running this again. As you can see, we get an error that reads, first letter must be an uppercase letter. Let's go back to the body property and give it a first letter that is an uppercase letter and see if that error goes away. As you can see, we don't get an error. Brilliant. All right, that's all we're going to cover today. Thank you very much for watching, everyone. If you liked the video, please consider giving it a like rating on YouTube. If you have any comments or questions, you can write them in the YouTube comments section below or ping me on Twitter. I'm at Book of Codes. In the next video, we're going to take a look at SQLite hooks. After that, we're going to move on to inserting and querying data. If you want to see those videos in your subscription feed and simultaneously support the channel, please consider subscribing. Goodbye.